Hey guys, so last time we talked about uh, just a general type 1, type 2 errors for any hypothesis test. Now we're going to move into how to actually write out the null and alternate hypothesis before we touch the rejection region and how to get the critical value. Because at the end of the day, we need to know how to do that in order for us to now start plugging in numbers. So this is probably, um, people consider this a little more difficult part of the hypothesis test because from here on out it's very procedural. So once we get this, we're going to start doing actual hypothesis tests and um, plug in some numbers to all these things. So null and alternate hypotheses. So before we kind of wrote out in general null and alternate hypotheses, now we're actually going to, I'm going to give you problems and we're going to actually write out with numbers, whether we're talking about means or proportions, um, nulls and hypotheses. So there are a few ways that hypotheses may be stated. Um, so if you're looking um, at the claim and it says that there's, you know, for example, people's weights are at least 140 pounds, or people weigh 140 pounds or higher, or this particular group weighs that much. Whatever the case may be, if you're seeing the word at least, at least since it includes an equal sign, right? So if it's at least 140 pounds, it's saying 140 and up, right? So that's gonna fall in the null, and then the alternate is gonna be the opposite, greater than. So again, this is a interesting concept. So at the end of the day, because it includes equals, it's going to fall in the null. Cool? So I claim this as at least, that one's going to be the null, the alternate's going to be the exact opposite. And we're going to go through um, a bunch of different versions of this and do some problems. So is or is equal to, so people are weighing 100 pounds, so the weight of, the average weight of the United, of Americans is 100 pounds. The average weight of Americans equals 100 pounds. If there's a claim like that, again, equals, falls on the null, and then the alternate is going to be the exact opposite. So in this case, it's going to be not equal to, right? Because if it's equal to, not equal to is kind of taking into account it's really big or really way less than what we expected it to be. Now, is different from or is not? So let's talk about maybe proportions now, proportions of men and women. Um, so if we say the proportion of men is different from 50%, or the proportion of women is not 60%, these are saying not equal to, right? And then this then is equal to. So let's go ahead and write a couple things too. So this here is saying greater than or equal to. This is saying equals. And this is saying not equal to. And these are all things that come from the claim um, within the problem. So these are very specific to each problem. It's not like, and these may not be every single type of version of it, but these are just generally like some words and what would they would be associated with and how we go ahead and come up with this null and alternate hypothesis. And here I actually said proportions, so let's make this P. And we will be dealing with means or proportions. Um, so, I mean, it's not that different from means proportion, it's just that the way that I describe my example is a proportion type of problem. Um, lower than or less than, that's basically this sign, right? Does that have an equal sign? No, so it falls on the alternate. So let's say we're still talking about proportions, right? So the proportion is less than some number, the other one is going to be the opposite, greater than or equal to. More than or greater than, boom, right? So it's a greater than sign, so it kind of looks like a backwards C. Greater than. So let's go back to means, for example. The mean weight is greater than 100. Since it doesn't include an equal sign, we're going to put it at the alternate, and this is going to be the exact opposite, right? Now, last one, at most. So at most is, here's the maximum point and everything else. But it also includes that maximum point. So at most is less than or equal to. So it includes an equal sign. That falls under the null. And the alternate is going to be the exact opposite. Whoa, what just happened, Renzo, right? So here's a couple of examples. Um, now we're going to go into a couple of actual hypothesis tests full hypothesis tests, and I'm going to go ahead and do them for you. So when dealing with means or proportions, remember that you simply just have mu or p. So mu is population mean, and p is population proportion, because at the end of the day, these hypothesis tests are making claims about the population parameters, right? So remember, in full problems, and when I say in full problems, is because these are kind of just short and tailored just for us to kind of save some time and not really go into a lot of details. But when we get to full problems, Remember the basic difference, um, if you're kind of throwing a bunch of problems and you don't really know if it's means or proportions, the only difference is that if you're given a standard deviation, it's going to be a 
mean problem, right? We're talking about means. Because for means, when we get the z or when we get the standard error of the means, um, that's based off of we need a standard deviation. Now proportions, we don't need that. So if you're not given a standard deviation in a full hypothesis problem, you're definitely dealing with proportions. Cool. So there's a new Android phone that's come out. They want to test the claim to that people spend between phone and accessories um, at least $340 on their first purchase. So state the null and alternate hypothesis. So here, at least $340. That means at least so greater than or equal to 340, right? And here, again, if you are a full problem, the quick way for you to tell is whether it's dealing with a mean or standard deviation, um, if they gave you standard deviation. Here, I'm not really giving you all those numbers quite yet because I don't want to confuse you guys. It's just in general, how do I pull out a null and alternate hypothesis? So here, we're talking about money, which um, in general isn't like a ratio. It's not like people spend either 340 or not. It's not like a P and Q type of thing. We're just dealing with means here. So null and alternate. So that less than or equal to falls under what? Since it has an equal sign, it's going to go under the null, right? So the mean price or the mean that people spend is greater than or equal to 340. And so what's our alternate? The opposite, right? Is less than 340. And that's pretty much it. I mean, all you really know is what is the claim asking you? Does it fall in the null and alternate? The alternate or null, whichever one you didn't have, is going to be the exact opposite. Cool? So let's go ahead and try another one. So AT&T wants to claim that customers spend less than 10 minutes. Less than 10 minutes. Boom. Right? On the phone before having their issue handled by the customer service representative. State the null and alternate hypotheses. So let's have our HAO and our HA. So less than 10. That's what we're looking at. So less than tells us that it's going to fall under which one? The null or the alternate? It's going to be the alternate, right? So that the mean is less than 10 minutes and the average is greater than or equal to 10 minutes. Does that make sense? So just look in there, look for the claim or look for whatever you're supposed to be testing and then if it says something um, in the form of a greater than, less than or equal to, but of course in words, right? It's, uh, for most cases you're not going to be given the exact hypothesis. It's not going to say like test that the mean is less than 10. Um, it'll kind of give you a bunch of words and that's the whole part of statistics is like it's not just math, you're actually given a bunch of word problems and you're supposed to extract this information. So that's usually the hardest part. So that's why we're doing this piece by piece. Now, a Business Journal wants to estimate the percentage of companies with female CEOs within the United States. They prove that they want to prove that at most 30% 30 com 30 of companies nationwide have a female CEO. So, at most 30%. So here we're talking about a percentage of people of CEOs who are women. So they're either women or they're men, right? So this would be a proportion type of problem. Again, that's not like the ideal way what I would like to teach it, but right now, just to not have a bunch of numbers and freak everybody out, I'm just keeping it this way and just letting you know kind of my thought of process in terms of how to decide. When you have a full hypothesis test, you will have a standard deviation. You will have a proportion to work with. So um, once we do the full ones, then we'll get into really how to distinguish one or the other. But for now, 30% in general, that's usually a proportion problem. So at most 30%. So that means 30% or less, right? Less than or equal to 0.30. So less than or equal to falls under which one? The null or alternate? Falls under the null, right? So proportion is less than or equal to 0.30. And proportion is greater than. And why is it greater than? Because it's just the opposite, right? And so the alternate tends to be just the opposite of what the null ends up being. Now one note is that there are also some situations, some instances where people will just say the null is always equal to. Um, and that's fine. That's fine. Um, just make the null always equal to. The alternate is the one that's going to be less than, greater than, or uh, not equal to. Moral of the story is that the alternate is the one that doesn't have the equal sign. That's how in general you should look at every single problem. And so here I'm kind of giving every possibility. And so if the, alter if the null also really matters, how to write out the null. But some cases the null um, some professors will just say, in general, the null is always that it's equal to. And the alternate's the one that changes. But I'm kind of doing the situation where the null and alternate also vary as well. So 
Here's for the most part, and then for some instances, um, the null will always just be equal. So that's pretty much it for the null and alternate. And so now we're going to use this information to go ahead and get rejection regions. Those rejection regions are, again, based off of where's my cutoff to reject the null hypothesis, right? So we're going to have these little critical values um, in our hypothesis test. So how do we do that? Let's go ahead and figure that out in our next video.